Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm happy to be with you today, and I am pleased you are attending this class. I hope it will provide you some valuable information about how to exchange models between advanced design and Revit by using Power Pack. My name is Sébastien Pigeon. I am a civil engineer with more than 12 years of experience as a structural engineer. I am also a Revit and a Power Pack trainer within the Great Tech team. Today's topic is quite interesting, so let's have a look at the course of the presentation. We will start the class with an explanation of the new concept behind the new analytical model embedded in this last version of Revit. I will mention the main point of this new analytical model. We will continue our presentation with the introduction of the new capability embedded in this uh, version and how we can use it to realize an analytical model. To conclude, um, we will analyze the different uh, scenario related to the new approach to export and import uh, some um, elements from Revit to advanced design by using uh, the BIM Connect, this uh, powerful tools made by Gritech, which is included in the Power Pack, and it's, uh, it's included in the Power Pack, yes. Uh, we will pay attention to the parameters that we uh, need to set to have a really um, effective workflow. Uh, we will also uh, see how the BIM Connect can help us to create uh, this bridge between Revit and advanced design, how also he allows us to improve our structural study, and finally, how we can develop a new BIM centered workflow uh, through the BIM Connect. So now let's start. Let's start and see what is new in this last version of Revit about the new analytical model. So in Revit 2023, uh, we have now the possibility to realize um, a new kind of analytical model. Um, and this, part one, the new concept for the analytical model. Revit 2023 offer us a new concept for the realization of the analytical model. It's much more than a simple evolution, it's quite a revolution. Yes, indeed, it's a completely a disruptive approach to the structural element that have been put in place in this last release of Revit 20. This approach supports the demand from uh, several uh, structural engineer and to have a more uh, collaborative um, process around the BIM model and also the need to adjust and customize the analytical model without modifying the physical project. It offers us more flexibility and control uh, to realize some um, analytical modeling and in particular for complex structures such as aircraft hangars, bridges, electrical tower, slanted wall, a COVID member, or building office. As previously, uh, we can uh, realize some more uh, straighter structure, and this kind of structure can be correct easily due to the property of the analytical element. We can adapt each analytical element without modifying the physical counterpart uh, just after a simple selection and we can adjust its length, its positioning, for example. This model is more in line with the need of the structural uh, engineers and also take into account some part of the structure for the calculation and leverage on defined architectural element. It's now possible to adjust um, the position of the element without changing the position of the physical one. This new approach uh, will uh, allow the structural engineer to check different uh, options while searching for an optimal solution. We can also associate, as in the past, a physical model with our new analytical model, but the two models will stay independent. So if we make any changing, uh, changes um, about the position of the element of the physical model, that will have no impact on the position of the analytical one. So we have more um, degree of freedom uh, to realize our own um, analytical model. 
I think that this improvement will be will bring a great added value to the structural engineer work because now we can set uh, our hypothesis and uh, do it on our own without impact, impacting uh, the global model. This is one of the main points that we need to keep in mind. Now we can improve the flexibility, improve the collaboration, and also um, improve the independence between the analytical model and the physical one. So part two, the new capabilities. Revit 2023 is reinforced by additional function dedicated to the realization of the analytical model, which are members and panels. This allows us to realize most of the analytical elements that we need for a structure. For example, for members, um, we will be able to realize some colon beams, uh, bracing um, element and also gitters. With panel, we will be able to realize some wall and slab and um, bracing wall also. Um, uh, this new function are localized and there is also a last function that I've been uh, embedded in this last release of Revit, which is uh, analytical automation that will allow us to uh, use some information from the model to realize the analytical element in link with this element. One of the things that we really need to uh, understand is the fact now we can uh, use a um, structural model without uh, any uh, Revit element, so it can be made standalone. We can create analytical element uh, for um, all, ob all object and we can also create a link between analytical element and the physical one. So let's uh, focus a little bit more on uh, the different function. So for example, analytical member has used uh, to representing structural column, beam, leaders, and bracing element. Uh, there are two methods to draw analytical uh, member. Top point, so it will be uh, the element will be defined as a vertical uh, element, and there is also start and end point, so we can create and clean need member by using two point, and also by using um, a 3D sniff snapping option, uh, which is integrated, and we're gonna really um, simplify the work to realize the analytical structure. We have also now the possibility to create, uh, to use analytical panel, and this uh, function will allow us to realize some floor, uh, wall, and panel. The shape of this element can be adjusted by node, edge, and we can also edit the boundary to change, um, to change the size of our panel. However, if we want to realize some opening in the panel, uh, we will need to use um, the function called um, opening by face. Or if we um, have um, a physical element with opening, we can generate a panel by using analytical automation. And this panel will, uh, will take into account of the opening that is uh, localized in the physical element, and you will have an opening in the analytical element. Um, in comparison, just a, com a little comparison between analytical model category in uh, Revit 22 and Revit 23, we see that the number of um, analytical model category is less important in uh, Revit 2023, and that is due to the fact that now all the analytical elements are um, in the most part of the analytical elements are in the same group, and to um, distinguish uh, which analytical element uh, is, we will um, look at we will need to look at the structural role that is uh, put in place in this analytical element. 
uh, also a comparison between what uh, was uh, done in Revit 22 and what is now available in Revit 2023. Uh, it's an example of a wall. Now, if you look on the property on the wall, it's um, in Revit 2022, we uh, could uh, use the wall for a structural element and enable analytical model but we don't have this function in Revit 2023. So we will see a little bit later how we can leverage from the structural, uh, how we can leverage from the uh, architectural element to realize a good analytical model. Um, something that is important to notice is the fact that for sure, we need now to precise the structural role of all um, analytical members and uh, we can also define uh, the node uh, with the grid so the node can be linked with the grid and the level also and that is really something that you need to do in order to simplify the realization of your analytical model and um, now, if we want to realize uh, to automate the realization of analytical model, we can use analytical automation. It's based on a Dynamo script, and this uh, script uh, will um, show like this. So you use analytical automation. After you need to um, run the script, it will ask you to select the different elements that you want to have and it will create a link between the physical element and the analytical one. And this script is a um, role-based system. So you can choose, um, for example, which group uh, will be considered to be aligned, which is, or which, is the, or which will be the first group, which will have the, um, the most important for you. So I think, uh, due to some examples that I made, uh, wall, columns, and beams, it's a good order to have a, a well-connected structure. And you can also define if you want to inherit the property from the physical, uh, physical element, create the analytical uh, openings from the floor and the wall, as I told you before. And also if you want to associate with the counterpart, uh, yes or not. And so, and the association, uh, what the association will do, it will uh, create a link between the physical and the analytical element. And we will be able to see this link. If we click on the analytical element, we will have the, the option highlight association. And if we click on it, we will see the, the element associate with the analytical element. Uh, so maybe you may ask how we can correct the model now, because if you have opened the um, Revit 2023, uh, we have less function to correct the analytical element, and that is, that is true. If we want to um, proceed to some adjustment, we will need to um, uh, tab, uh, select the analytical member, for example, you can uh, local coordinate system and global coordinate system and adjust uh, the member by uh, controlling the head of the edge of the member. We can also adjust uh, the, the analytical panel by uh, editing the boundary and, and, and by picking a plane that will uh, allow us to have some structure in line with some grids that we have put in place or even with some uh, physical elements. So that is a great way to adjust the structure. Uh, below you will see a little uh, tab that I've made that I explain the different uh, methodologies that you can use to correct the model. For, for example, for member, we can uh, use the functional line in 3D and in line with the wall edge, slab edge, grid nodes. It's, um, it's quite useful.
So now let's have a look at part three. In this first part, we will see how to link Revit model to advanced design. The new approach regarding the analytical model led us to the possibility of four different scenarios when exporting information between Revit to the calculation software. So we can be in presence of physical model only, physical model associated with the analytical model, physical model not associated with the analytical model, and finally, analytical model only. It might be seems obvious, but one of the first step um, is to be in possession of the Beam Connect. The Beam Connect is this powerful tool developed by the Great Tech team, which is a key to the interoperability between the software. This tool includes many functions that will allow us to better manage the workflow. Uh, three of the major uh, functions are the import, the export, and the synchronization. So in accordance with the scenario which, is, which we will find ourselves, we will particularly pay attention to the setting. Um, so let's move on to the physical model only now. Okay, so now we are on Revit and we have uh, this two-story building. So here I am on the physical model and on the right I can see the analytical model. I'll have nothing there. So that means I have just uh, the physical model. To be sure of this assumption, I can select all the physical elements. And I can see here, as association, um, the box is unchecked. So that means that there is no analytical model link to this physical one. So that is great. Um, what I can say, what I can do before I realize the exportation, maybe I can check the section of some element. Oh, yeah. So let me check the section of this column. So the section of the column is uh, 30 by 45 centimeters. So we will keep that in mind to see if the exportation um, did well. And I can also uh, see that the power pack is well integrated in um, Revit because, as you can see, we have the same tag on the same uh, place. I have the power pack. Um, the per pack. I have also the per pack detailing and the per pack design, which are two other versions of the per pack who uh, allow us to realize the reinforcement in Revit. Uh, okay, so I'm going to check the setting. So what I want is not export only analytical model because I don't have any analytical model. So the setting is good. So far, I also realized before the mapping section. So now I can realize the exportation. I can choose if I want to um, choose advanced design on another software, but I choose advanced design. So he uh, realized a report. So in this configuration, I can check if all the elements have been well exported. So that's the case. And now, uh, now we are in advanced design. Remember, we didn't have any analytical model. However, now in advanced design, we will be able to have the structure which was in, present in Revit. Let me, okay, I will hide the grid. And let's see if the section has been well exported. I can check, as you see, I have the correct dimension. 30 by 45 centimeter. So this is a really powerful tool to export any kind of just physical model from Revit to uh, advanced design. So um, now in order to save some time, I will go back to the PowerPoint. And so therefore we have our model uh, within the calculation software, thanks to the Beam Connect. This model, um, due to the fact it has been imported and created from the Beam Connect uh, in link with um, physical geometry, it, it can contain some um, error of a bad connection. So we will need to verify that. Uh, the correction of the, um, 
structure can be done easily due to the dedicated tools um, included in advanced design. As you can see, we have a check control. We can also realize a projection on plane. We can stretch through node. Uh, we can um, uh, create and um, adjust uh, the offset. So there is plenty of tools that we can use to correct the model, uh, including advanced design. So after these um, things have been done, we will be able to carry out the structural analysis, and we will be able to obtain the force on the linear element, but also the, the moment on the planar element and the displacement of the structure. All this information uh, could be after exported thanks to um, advanced design and the fact that we are going to use a specific files which contain all this data which, which is a GTCX5 it's a file made by the Gretek team who really help us to realize um, this interoperability between uh, advanced design and Revit so now we can go back in Revit and due to the fact that we didn't have an um, analytical model uh, first when we realize the exportation, I will suggest you to realize more an exportation than a synchronization. And in this importation, we will be able to um, bring back the geometry in advanced design, but not uh, only the geometry. We will be able to um, bring back the result on the different structural element. And that will allow us to have more information. So just as a, a conclusion, we have seen that it was possible to have just an a physical element in Revit, use the Beam Connect to have um, the structure in advanced design. In advanced design, we can uh, verify, check, and correct the structure. And we can also uh, bring back the result obtained in advanced design to Revit. So this is what we can do now. Um, about the first scenario. Let's see what's happen when we are in presence of some other scenarios. So in this second uh, scenario, we will see how we can link a physical model to an analytical uh, model, in particular by using the analytical automation. The support of this scenario will be a 12 story office building. Let's go in Revit. Okay, so now we are on Revit. I already uh, placed my level and also my grid. I just want to show you how you can uh, use Revit to realize um, this type of structure in a really uh, simple way. So I can choose my uh, colon as you can see and i gonna use uh, this powerful tools which is uh, add grid so i select add grid and after i just need to select all the grid and it will place a column at the intersection of the grid so that is really a, a huge tools that you need to to know how to use it purpose of this demonstration okay, as you can see i have put all the grid that i wanted all the column that i wanted on the grid and i can do the same for the beam and to do that i really need uh, to place the column before i uh, place my beam now it takes just a little time but uh, you see i will go on 3d and we have our results and just to show you how you how we can uh, we don't need this column here so this element and i will place my wall okay yeah yeah that is supposed to uh, represent my elevator cage I can also put some openings. Need to go in and go out. Um, okay. And now I can also place a uh, floor. It's really easy to do. And I will uh, realize my opening. Uh, when I realize the contouring of my floor.
much better. If I wanted, I could have selected that. So, okay, and I, now I have my switcher, my first level. And what I would like to show you is how you can uh, copy and pass all these elements. So you just need to pass and you click on, uh, you just need to copy and you click on pass and align on the, on the level. And now, as you can see, we have, uh, we have almost already done a good part of the structure. Now that uh, what now what I want to do is just to pass the the floor and the beam. Okay, and uh, so now I have selected my beam and uh, my floor. I can uh, select the level where I want to place them. So now you can see how fast we have created uh, three stories. So just in order to um, uh, save some time, I will go back on my Revit structure, but the, the methodology was the same. And now what I want to do is to realize my analytical model in link with the physical model that I have here. So to do that, I'm going to use the analytical automation. So I click on it. Will take some time to open the Dynamo um, script. So here we have our Dynamo script. We need to click on play again. And now um, we need to select the element that we uh, that will be the support from uh, for our analytical model. Uh, we can specify if you want to use the connection walls. Just pay attention to the unit. It will be in the general unit of the project. So if we are in, in centimeters, it will be in centimeters. In meters, it will be in meter. In foot, it will be in foot. So I can say if I want um, a tolerance of distance between the analytical model and the other one, I can say also if I want the same tolerance of distance uh, between the level. And after, I can also put in place some uh, priority rules. For example, to realize uh, my structure, I can say at uh, the beginning that I want to put in place uh, the wall after the column, and I will finish with the, with the beam. So the beam will try to uh, be in contact with the wall and the column. So that will really uh, help me to have a good uh, analytical model without too many uh, instability or connection errors. I can also decide if I want to um, bring back the property of the physical element to the analytical one. So I will have the material, the section chip, uh, section type, but also the internal rotation um, rotation uh, angle. Okay, I can decide also if I want to create the opening in link with the opening uh, that are uh, present in the wall or in the floor. So as example, if I, was, uh, if I have a window in my wall, I can, by selecting that, I have a window in my uh, analytical panel. And I can also say if I want to associate or not my physical element with its counterpart is with the analytical element. I say yes to all this uh, and I run the script. So it's going to realize current analytical element. So as you can see in the back now, we have um, a structure. So let's see more clearly what we have. So I have my analytical element. I have my floor, I have everything. If I want to uh, load my structure, I can do that. 
by using uh, loaded area so it's really uh, simple to do and this load will be exported when i will do the exportation from revit to advanced design so we keep a link and we can send data from some software to another this is what uh, we are going to see and if i want also to check my structure and to you know improve as uh, a connection i can do that by selecting the element that i want to change and um, i will recommend to uh, go on edit boundary and to do the modification um, one of the reasons that i really like to do that is because in edit boundary i can use a line and so I have more accuracy um, about what I'm doing and it's also easy to do okay when I finish I click on finish and uh, okay so I ah, right now and uh, here I have my structure which has been uh, corrected so I need I will need to do that for uh, each element so um, but it was just um, an example about how you can uh, correct your structure and now I can go on pull back I'm gonna take my settings okay so I will export only the analytical model this is exactly what I want to do the dialog box and I can export and now we go back in uh, advanced design on my uh, model I just have put in place some uh, foundation to realize the calculation so I can show you the result of the calculation I've made before so I really exported all the structure and I was able to realize the calculation I can go on manage an application in advanced design just in order to um, really put in place the things that I want to export I can uh, also export the theoretical reinforcement if I made a, an analysis on the concrete element okay and uh, now I just need to go on um, I'm good I, I just need to go on beam and uh, export generate a uh, uh, fly and now I can go on synchronize and uh, as you can see it will export the element I need to specify uh, the file for sure and I, I have um, what is good I, in the legend I can see the new element the modify the deleted or the unchanged element uh, if I just want to uh, select uh, my uh, my foundation I can do that click on accept and it will import uh, all the foundation in my uh, Revit model I can also see that some uh, column have been changed due to the fact that I changed the dimension of this column in my uh, uh, advanced design project so this is what I can do I can also if I want due to the fact that I'll also uh, import the result as you can see on the result manager i can uh, um, display some results so to do that i will go on the result manager and for example if i want to um, show some um, my uh, moment so moment in the y direction i can do that okay so i obtain Okay, so I obtain the, the moment here it, it can be a little bit difficult to really understand due to the fact that we have um, the maximum and the minimum value which are represented so I can go on still edit style on the diagram of moment and here on the text annotation I will show uh, I will choose uh, none 
that's going to be a little bit uh, simple to see and if i want also to improve the quality of the of my vis my uh, visualization i can hide the floor for example maybe just uh, okay so that's uh, part on that's the end of part two so part three physical model not associated uh, with analytical model so as a first hypothesis we will see we will say that uh, we had uh, before an analytical model associated with the physical one and i gonna show you how we can remove this association so for that let's go in revit again Okay, so uh, now I'm going in uh, Revit, and in Revit I want to delete this association. So to do that, I need to uh, select. Okay, so that doesn't show me the property. So okay, I understand why. I need to select uh, only the analytical panel and the analytical member. Now I have the possibility to use the function remove association, so that will uh, cut the link between the physical model and the analytical one. And uh, when that is done, I'm just uh, checking the fact that I will export only the analytical model, and I can launch uh, the exportation. So I will do that, and uh, to save some time, I will show you show you what I obtained so now we are on advanced design so we obtain the same structure almost and but uh, we need to notice the fact that the center line of the beam is not the same is not the top of the beam is most the center of the, of the beam so that is the main difference that I see between the fact when the analytical model is linked or not with the physical one so now let's move on the last part which is the analytical model only so to uh, give you the most information about the creation of the analytical model i uh, propose you to follow me on the construction of uh, uh, roof structure from a uh, stadium and i will show you how we can use some work plane to realize um, to realize our analytical model in this analytical uh, model, we will put in place uh, different elements like uh, column, member, gitter, and uh, beam. And I will show you how we can do that. So now let's move on Revit. So now we are on Revit, and I can choose my uh, work plane. So to choose the correct work plane, I can also um, choose some grid okay. and now I can realize my uh, analytical um, member after I can also specify the role to, uh, to after use a filter and to see them uh, in different color okay. so I bring it I almost done all my structure. I will show you. Uh, okay, I will show you the result. So now I am in 3D. I have done all my structure in my first uh, work plane. So I can pass and copy uh, the structure. Well, 1.5 meters. Okay in 3d i also put a filter it's for what we see and color i uh, delete the column i just uh, conserve the column in the in the middle and now i'm going to show you how you can uh, connect the member it's really easy to do you just need to select the node and use the function line so i select the node the first no don't need to go there okay and it's the same here so 
I select the node and after okay so you see with the functional line we can really uh, have some accuracy about uh, our structure to save again some time I will go back on my PowerPoint so you see I was able to uh, realize all my structure in Revit and after by using export and uh, I was able to have my structure in Advanced Design, where also I can um, put in place some um, calculations, some wind calculation, for example. And now here I have some displacement about my structure due to this uh, dead load. So when I think that all my dimensions are good, I can um, export this element and I will bring back this information by using the beam connect and also by using the um, importation function that is included in the beam connect okay so i will uh, choose to bring also the geometry i will map the um, different family okay, and i'm able to obtain my structure in revit uh, so that's really good and and so that shows us how we can use an analytical model in Revit and link this model to advanced design. So as a global conclusion, we have seen that it was possible to have some physical or analytical model in Revit associated or not and use the Beam Connect to realize some exportation, but also to realize the creation of an analytical model which will be used in advanced design and after in advanced design we have seen it was possible to export all this information and by using the beam connect in revit we can import or synchronize this information to update our uh, revit model that is really um, so the beam connect is really a key to a great interoperability between revit and advanced design as I am concerned about the time, I will just do a quick review. So uh, today we have seen that uh, we have a new approach, a new concept for the analytical model in Revit 2023. This uh, new approach um, is based on the fact that the analytical model can be made standalone and the analytical model is independent from the physical one. The new capabilities are member and panel, so due to this cap uh, new function we can create almost any type of uh, structure. But if we want to leverage from the physical model, it can be done by using the uh, Dynamo scripts, which will automate the creation of the analytical model. And to have a good link between uh, Revit model and advanced design, we need to use the Beam Connect. And the Beam Connect is really an efficient tool uh, that allows us to export, import, and synchronize any type of structure and any type of uh, scenario um, in Revit to uh, advanced design. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at greatech.com. I wish you a good day. Bye-bye.